this video I want to explore a little bit of parametric design in SketchUp with um, my Ruby code editor and just applying some of the uh, things that are actually in the basic uh, just script examples. But you'll, you'll see you can actually rewrite this from scratch fairly easily. So what's the idea? The uh, idea is basically that you have a brick wall and um, you know, a common way to make this look a little more interesting is to take a few of the headers and bump them out. Um, this gives you uh, nice shadow lines and it'll make it look quite interesting. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to set up a, a model like this here so that I could then do a little bit of a parametric study on that and just try out a few different designs and uh, maybe export them as, as images or I mean in theory you could um, create one design make a copy of this wall, create another one, and, and so on and so forth. So there's different ways you can you can approach this. But in any case, let me show you first how I set up my model. So it all starts, <laughs> as always, with one brick. Okay, so here's, there's a brick, and um, I made it a component. If you go up here, you'll see it's a component, and it's a brick component. So then, of course, you know, you'll know you start uh, um, your coursing, something like this, uh, a little more. Um, and uh, you'll we should probably offset this somehow. So I'm just going to, well, oops. Do this this in by two inches. Something like this. Um, okay, so so these are our regular um, bricks. Now we do need some headers that can bump out. In order to do that, I'm actually going to take one of these bricks, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say make unique. This means now it's its very own brick brick number one. And I could name it something uh, different, but whatever you name it here, this is the name you need to remember. All right, let's keep brick number one for now. Um, although in my example, it's slightly different. So I'm going to rotate this, place it here, and I'll just adjust right there. And then I'm going to keep building up my wall. Now, this is not exactly the same wall that you just saw. I'm just going to explain um, how this comes together. So ultimately, what you want is a lot of copies of your regular brick component that you do uh, not affect with this code. You don't do anything to those. But you have these headers, which will slide in and out. Um, and in order for us to work on only the headers, we need to give those a different component name. And we kind of automatically did this, and we could name it something else right now. Um, so that's how you set up the model by itself. I'm just going to delete this, because ultimately I already have a, there you go, got a wall to work with. Um, OK, so now. Um, Next step is to go into the code editor and to write a little bit of code that works on this. And the idea is basically we're going to look through all of the bricks. We're going to find only the headers right here. And we're going to apply um, you know, a, a motion to them, um, pulling them out, uh, which is called a transformation. And what you saw me do off screen earlier was basically just hit this button and these guys pop out by a certain amount. And that's defined in this code here. All right, so let me just quickly go through the code. Um, uh, it's really simple, you know, this is all there is. Not much there. Um, the top little bit here uh, is my standard snippet that I have in there. What I'm working with right now is actually just the entities collection, which means every single element in SketchUp gets looked at. And then if it is a header break, it gets moved. All right. 
Next, I'm defining a, um, a variable, you know, the maximum amount in inches, because this is just a number here, and SketchUp always considers numbers as inches, uh, um, you know, how far that moves out. But you could actually do different uh, uh, dimensions, although it doesn't make much sense in this case here. You could just do something like this, and it, it'll become two feet. But we're going to leave two inches, because that <laughs> is a little more realistic. Um, Next, we're going to just iterate through all the entities. So entity each and E is going to be the individual entity, the individual brick, because I got nothing else in my model, so it'll, it'll just be these bricks um, that I'm looking through. And then I'm applying all of this to each individual one. All right, so first of all, I'm going to check whether it's a, a component. All of these are components, even my regular ones. So those are do not ones. So I have to say, uh, check that it is a component, which is right here. And the definition name is brick2, because I named all my headers here brick2. Um, again, you could go with whatever naming scheme you want. But as long as the definition name matches right here, um, we're doing something with those. OK, and then I actually have three different transformation here, and I'll walk through those. This first one is a uniform transformation, which you just saw, a random transformation, where they all kind of look differently, um, just based on random numbers. And then the third one is a wave. Um, and then the last line here is, you know, short and sweet, <laughs> basically, uh, transforms each one of the selected entities, which is these headers, by a certain transformation. And I just numbered them so that I can exchange them quickly. And that's really it. There's, there's really not much to this code. So how does this work? So now I'm going to pull this up to the side a little bit <coughs> and show you what happened. So the first one is the uniform transformation. So I basically down here said T1, which gives me a uniform transformation because it says in this line here, T1 is uh, a new transformation, a translation actually. And then you need to give it a vector x, y, z. x is the red axis, y is the green axis, and z is the blue axis. So since I want to bump this out from this wall, it's the y axis that I'm working with. And I have to put a little minus there because I'm pulling it out towards me. You know, you could flip the whole thing around if you want to, but but uh, by default, you know, as you all know, the green axis goes into the field in SketchUp, and this has to be minus that um, extension in this case. So minus two inches, which I defined up here. Hit play, I get my uniform um, pattern. Okay, now let's assume I took a picture of that and I saved it somewhere. Okay, that's design number one. So I'm going to go go undo. This is kind of the uh, undo <laughs> parametric design approach where I um, apply different um, designs and different different codes and so on and I just kind of you know play with the values and see what what I like. Okay so then the second one here is random so I'm going to change my transformation to T2. Uh, again you wouldn't have to do that every single case but it's just easy with my code here. So same thing as before uh, I'm going to apply a translation, x, y, z, and then the y number now is randomized. So I'm basically taking the same two inches, or the same maximum number from up there, right here, and I multiply it with a random number. And random numbers are always between 0 and 1. And so um, by doing that, I'm basically going between 0 and my maximum extension. Want to see how this looks? Hit play. Do you like the design? If you don't like it, hit undo, hit play again. Hit undo. You could change the value now, just so that we see it a little more. So I'm going to change my maximum extension to 4, and there you go. Pretty easy, right? So this way you get a reasonably, you know, <laughs> real random. Now you could de debate whether the random num number generator is actually giving you random numbers. But, um, but, uh, this gives you a random distribution, which is very easy to do with a little bit of code. Okay, so I'm going to do undo again. And switch my maximum extension back to 2, otherwise we're kind of pushing these out too far. 
And then the third option here, I wanted to have basically a sine wave, you know, in and out kind of undulating um, approach. So <clears throat> this gets a little more involved, but it's, it's really not that hard. So first of all, I need to get the position of these, um, of these headers, because ultimately I'm going to move them in and out based on that position. So position, um, uh, uh, I'm basically going with the center of the boundary box. Um, a bounding box, which is uh, that every entity has a bounding box which encloses it, and SketchUp can easily get the center, and that's a that's a point 3D, so it's basically a position that I can use by simply saying position dot x. Very simple. All right, so now this is where the fun is. Is basically in this line. So the extension is ignore the two at the beginning. So we're doing a sine function of the x position. So the further we are in the x direction along the red axis, you know, the more this changes, but uh, gets modulated by a sine function. And then I'm going to add to that a sine function in the z direction, in the blue direction. So the further up I go, the more that gets modulated. And then all of that in brackets gets multiplied by that maximum extension. Now I have a few modifiers in here. So first of all, I multiply my positions by a certain value because otherwise it's just too small. You know, it just doesn't look very good. Uh, and play with this, you know, multiply, divide. There's all kinds of ways you can do this. You can do sinus here, cosine there, or whatever, you know, any, any kind of um, formula. Then at the beginning, this two basically means that I'm going to have a minimum extension of two. So it's two plus whatever this is. So ultimately, this can go up to, you know, uh, uh, four, a uh, higher number um, than, than, than just the two, than these other two. So you might have to play with the maximum extension a little bit. The other thing that I wanted was I didn't want this to go into the wall because, as you all know, a sine wave goes up into positive and then goes into negative and goes back into positive and so on and so forth. Um, so positive is good. We're bumping out from the wall, but negative, I don't want to go in because it catches water. It's not good. So, um, but, but I still want the wave to kind of disappear at that point. So I don't want to have absolute values in this case. So I came up with this little line here where I'm um, saying if my extension, the number I get here, is larger than zero, then just use it right there. But if it's less or equal than zero, then set it to zero. So this is this nice shorthand if then else kind of thing where the first part gets checked because I have a uh, question mark here. If the question mark is true, that happens as the question mark is, or if the first part here is false, then the second it happens. That's all this line does here. Keep it in the positive. And then the third line is the same as above, you know, just a translation. Um, again, only in the y direction and minus because we're pulling out and then other than that just apply the extension. So now in order to see that I'm going to have to change this to T3. I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to hit play. Ta-da! There you go. So there's there's that. And like I said, you know, play with the values, change things. You know, I'm going to change this to cosine. Hit play again. There you go. Now we've got a cosine formula. Um, you can apply it twice if you want to. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really make much sense. But um, there you go. Yes. A lot of fun you can have with this, and it's a really fast and easy way to do uh, a quick parametric design where part of it is just plain old modeling, and part of it is very simple scripting. Uh, doesn't work always for everything, but for this, I think it works pretty well. All right, so have fun with this. Hope this tutorial was useful, and enjoy working with SketchUp.